Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I woke up this morning to some heated debate on my timeline, and I just wanted to chime in and share my two cents. But first, I want us all to make dua for our brother, Isa Abu Isa. You know, subhanAllah, he lost his son recently, and um, I don't even know what to say about it, you know, but may Allah make it easy for him and uh, for his family and bless him, you know, his brother, he's uh, contributed a lot, good brother, and uh, I can't even imagine what he's going through right now, so if we could all make dua for him, um, I'd appreciate it, and I'm sure he'd appreciate it, but moving on, the topic at hand today is a tawheed, that's what people are talking about. And that's what I want to, uh, I want to share some of my thoughts because I've noticed that there are people who seem to feel like a Tawheed is limited to the book Kitab Tawheed by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah. People act like if you, not even criticize that book, but if you perhaps suggest that, hey, you know what, maybe instead of teaching this book, we should take a different approach. Maybe there's a better way to reach our community and change its situation rather than this particular book. People act like you're going against the Tawheed. Like, like as if Tawheed is based off of that book. No, that book is based off of Tawheed. All of Islam is based on Tawheed. The Quran, the Sunnah, you can't study Islam, you can't teach Islam, you can't practice Islam without Tawheed. It's not limited to this book. And I'm not criticizing the book. The book is great. It's a great book. I've studied it in depth. I love it. If somebody likes the book and they're going to benefit from it, then that's great. But if somebody is in a certain community and they, they've seen for the past 10, 20, 30 years that people have been teaching this book and it doesn't seem to really resonate with the community. It doesn't really seem to be making those changes that we need to see. Are they wrong for saying, hey, maybe we should take a different approach? When you're giving da'wah, when you're calling to Tawheed, you have to do it in a way that has hikmah, that has wisdom, that's relevant to the people. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, when he wrote this book, Kitab al-Tawheed, it was relevant to the people. In his location, at his time, hundreds of years ago. All right, so let's think about some of the, the problems, some of the issues that are prevalent in our communities in the U.S. We got literally Muslims murdering each other. We got literally Muslims selling drugs, being surrounded by drugs, using drugs. Fornication, people sleeping around, having illegitimate children, the, the family structure being broken. No brotherhood, brothers fighting each other, backbiting each other, not getting along. People who come up in a system where it seems like all the cards are stacked against them from a young age, maybe they get in trouble, they get incarcerated, and now they can't find a good halal job to maybe move to a better community. These are the type of issues a lot of people seem to be facing. So that being the case, is there a way that we can teach a tawheed, monotheism, that relates to these issues? Of course, absolutely. If, if we can address those issues and we can attach a tawheed to those particular things, then does it really make sense to talk about Listen, brothers, you shouldn't go seek barakah. You shouldn't go seek blessings from a particular tree. You shouldn't do that. Brothers and sisters, you shouldn't go to a sorcerer. You shouldn't practice black magic. Brothers and sisters, when you are slaughtering uh, your dinner, you shouldn't do it in the name of other than Allah. And please don't take anything I'm saying out of context. I'm not saying that none of those topics are important. Yeah, they're important, but are they the priority? Are they the most important things that we're facing in our communities? And if they're not, 
then there's nothing wrong with somebody saying, hey, perhaps we should address these issues, which Islam talks about in the context of a Tawheed. A Tawheed is not limited to one or two or three books. And if things have just been getting worse decade after decade, then perhaps we should try to see what we're doing wrong and try to come up with a different approach that perhaps will be more effective. Now, before I go, there's one last thing I want to point out. I think the reason why we are unfortunately even having this discussion amongst sincere brothers who are involved in da'wah and want what's best for our communities is because one segment of the people giving da'wah, the reason they're so attached to this book, Kitab al-Tawheed, is because this is a book that the ulama recommend. When the ulama are asked, what are some good books to use for teaching Tawheed? They're going to say Kitab al-Tawheed. They're going to say Usul al-Thalafa. But there's also other things that the ulama say. Now, I want to share my experience in Kuliyat al-Da'wah wa Usul al-Din. Alhamdulillah, I recently graduated from the College of Da'wah wa Usul al-Din. And I don't say that to brag or whatever. I'm saying that because I want you all to know that what I'm about to relay to you is what they taught me here. We specialized in da'wah, teaching people about Islam, calling people to Islam. Wa usul al-deen, the, the fundamentals of the religion, aqidah, tawheed. We studied aqidah, we studied tawheed more than other faculties. We spent our first two whole semesters studying kitab al-tawheed. And what I would hear time and time again from my teachers is they would say, when you guys go back to your countries, you guys have to take the information that we're teaching you and apply it with wisdom to them and their situation. You all know the situation of your communities better than we do. This is something they taught us and told us time and time again. And even outside of the Jamia. People who want to, to say, oh, but the scholars this, the scholars that. Sheikh Ali Nasir Faqih, I've known for maybe the past six or seven years, alhamdulillah. Him and I live in the same neighborhood. We, we would pray in the same masjid. And I would speak to him off and on over the years. And the last time I spoke to him, I told him, Sheikh, inshallah, I'm about to head back to the United States. This is my last semester. And the last word of advice he gave to me, the last thing he said to me after knowing me for all those years, he said, Sajid, when you go back and give da'wah in America, you have to do it with hikmah. You have to do it with wisdom. You have to give da'wah in the best, most appropriate way, with the best, most appropriate manners. When we call people to Islam in our communities, we have to do it with a certain wisdom that only we have. If I'm not from Philadelphia, and there's a brother from Philly saying, this is what's going on in the community. Such and such has been the response to us teaching these certain books over the years. This has been the result of the type of doubt what we've been giving in our communities. These are the sorts of issues that we're facing. It's upon me to listen to what he's saying and figure out how, based on the reality of what's going on, what's the wisest way to give da'wah in that community? Not to criticize him and tell him he's wrong and he doesn't. Who am I to say that to him? You know, a lot of people criticize Kuli to Dawa at Medina University. They act like, oh, you know, Kuli to Dawa, they're it's the easiest college and this and that. But people underestimate the reality of Dawa and its importance and having hikmah. Giving Dawa with hikmah versus giving Dawa without hikmah can be the difference between people accepting Islam and people leaving Islam. It can be the difference between building up a community and destroying a community. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Jazakumullahu khairan. Allah surely knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.